It's a scene from every swords and sorceries movie ever made. And you know it well. We have a hero. He's an adventurer traveling through the woods. And he stumbles upon something. He stumbles upon a beautiful little grotto with a waterfall and green and blue water. It's a secret little place, but it also has a group of warrior women, adventurers too, contemplating whether or not they should take a swim. Hi, it's Will from StormyCastle.com, and that was a little introduction to my new series of tutorials here. And these are a fast series, there's only going to be, I believe, three, and they're almost all already done already, so you won't have to wait long to see these. But what they are is how to make um, water for a diorama. And I've done a bunch of different techniques here, and this is part one, and in this part I will show you how to make a waterfall for a diorama. And you can see the waterfall there, it looks really nice. It's still a little wet, so it's, you know, it's still drying. But uh, that's a neat little technique. It looks really nice, and I really, I really like it. And you've got the pool there. And out here is where the ocean would come in. So I've got some waves cresting there. And I, and I have a river here, too, up top. River, um, a waterfall, a pond with waves and maybe some ripples, and then more of an ocean kind of a thing with larger waves there. And these are actually hard and hardened. So with this, now let me launch into this first part where I show you how to make the waterfall. And it's not that hard, you need just a few materials. Uh, to do a waterfall, it comes out really nice, you're going to use uh, a product called DAP Crystal Clear Sealant. It's crystal clear, that's really important, and DAP makes a good one. And some wax paper, a caulking gun for the sealant. I've taped down a piece of wax paper to a board. Just tape it down so you can work with it easier. And then all you have to do from there is run thin strips of your uh, crystal clear caulk side by side like this and just make sure you do it so it's extra long longer than what you need for the waterfall you're going to be building like mine is four inches so I could have to make these longer than four inches and you can just cut it and trim it later and I recommend you do more than one one waterfall so you have one to experiment with or to make mistakes on and I will lay out another one but then you take yourself uh, a toothpick or some kind of a little stick and then uh, work that a little bit make the striations in it so it has that nice vertical water running water kind of thing and blend the strips together so they bind well okay now this is the spot where our waterfall is going to go falling off the river here down into the lagoon so <clears throat> and we're going to be putting the, um, the crystal clear uh, the crystal clear caulk in that we laid out but <clears throat> you want to add a little bit of strength to that because it's very loose and flexible or very rubbery so what you can do is you can use some kind of plastic or if you can see here I've cut a strip out of this two liter bottle of soda alright and then you can put it under the low heat of a hair dryer to bend it into the shape you want. Be careful, it'll get hot. And I've already pretty much pre-bent this one. But you can manipulate that and bend it to the shape you want and then trim it. See, so I'm going to continue to bend this a little bit more, right about like that, to form the waterfall. Okay, once your cork is completely dried, your crystal clear cork, you can peel it off the wax paper carefully and it'll be a little tricky. And then you glue it to your your plastic form that you made. And make sure it stays plenty big because we're going to be trimming it down to size. So now the glue you can use, you can use a hot glue gun or you can use a glue called, uh, because this is a cork, it can be difficult to glue it. A glue called a cyanoacrylate. So see that? So I'll glue that on and I'll show you what it looks like. Now what we can do is start to try to size it. So start trim it with scissors. All right, see how I made the bottom there? Trim with scissors. This is going to be nice. All right, you can. You can't. You don't have to just trim the top and bottom. You can trim the sides too. That looks good. And now, now this isn't this isn't done yet. Now you can take more cork, or you can do this after it's in place. But once it's in place, I'm going to do it in place, then we will 
paint it a little bit with some white paint. We can add a little bit more cork so we can get some more um, iterations out of it. It's pretty nice. So I'm going to use a hot glue gun to melt it to, to, to glue it to the top. And actually the bottom of it and the bottom of it is going to be set right into the plastic that I've cast here. Now once the waterfall is in place and the glue is dried you can add small amounts of your cork, your crystal clear cork, to the top and the bottom to make a nice smooth transition and on the bottom I'm going to have like a rippling wave effect and then use a little tool to integrate it right so it looks uh, nice like a nice smooth transition like this and I'm actually going to see if we can make this wavy and it'll dry kind of nice it's like a ripple here at the waterfall but um, I'm actually going to show you another technique for, that's good for waves in the water crests and whatnot is add some white paint to it in stripes just a little bit not a whole lot and spread it around thin you don't want it to look like it's painted so use a wet use a very wet solution and just a little bit of white because what it is is it's like the frothing of the water just a little bit it's very easy to use too much white on that and there we go so it makes the water look more active and frothy to waterfall and don't coat it completely coat it in little patches and strips okay now I'm going to explain to you a little bit about um, some nice techniques for manipulating your water and let's uh, focus on the waterfall what you can use is and this is some really nice products here is you can use something called a gloss gels or glazing mediums like for instance I have a gloss gel medium a glazing medium and a, a super heavy gloss gel a gloss super heavy gel it's called and uh, these are artist supplies so you can buy them in like arts and craft stores or artist supply houses and they're usually used with like acrylic oil paintings but what they are is they have a lot of um they have a lot of form to them so you can actually paint them on and get nice shape effects so you can actually have the bubbling around the water you can put in waves and crests and they will dry clear make sure you get to types that dry clear most of them do dry clear um, transparent and you can also if you wanted to add a little bit of paint to them to uh, color them so all you have to do is you know depending on how big the waves and crests are you want to do you know you use a different type you use a medium or a heavy super heavy so and that so I like to use a really soft brush because with water you know you don't want really any sharp edges and then you can just you know brush it on into bubbling wave shapes and it's, 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 it's white right now but it will dry transparent and that will dry to that shape that you create so you can actually you know brush ripples like this if you wanted that ripples rippling out see it and for something like this bigger ripples closer to the waterfall and as you move away from it smaller ripples and there we go the waterfall is done it's all painted and uh, all set I have uh, lots more diorama making stuff on my website and I have uh, more tutorials on making water like how to actually do this kind of a water if you don't know how to what to use to pour this in uh, some tips about the background and underneath and how you get that color right and how to make uh, ripples and waves and a river a, a moving river so lots of stuff coming and lots on my website at stormthecastle.com thanks for watching